Hey, Chris the Maiden here for part three of Knuckles Chaotix. The stage featured on the game's international boxer is actually Speed Slider, which is very appropriate considering it's the best in the game, so it makes sense that it's the one that's advertised. This entire game takes place in a theme park. Sonic Colors was not the first Sonic game to entirely take place in a theme park, and it's also not the first game to have five acts. This game was. If you look at the top left corner of the screen, you'll see that it not only measures the minute, the amount of minutes and seconds that have passed, it also has two numbers right next to the seconds. Well, this was the second game in the Sonic franchise to use centiseconds in the time display, with the first being Sonic CD. Never really noticed that before. A centisecond is basically 0.01 seconds. I guess I like it. I mean, it's it's nice to see that it, it's easier to to see how long you have until the next second shows up. It's kind of pointless, though. You don't really need to know that. And oh, great, not again. And it takes forever to wear off, too. Usually I don't mind that, but it sucks when you're playing as heavy. Yeah, this act introduces you going through doors to progress with the level. Which takes a long time, which doesn't take a long time, but it still completely stops the flow because you have to stop and hold up, so I don't really like them all that much. And I don't like how this one is constantly flashing. So the story of this game is that, well, this game takes place on Carnival Island, and every character has their own individual reasons for coming here. So it's not like, in, in Sonic Heroes, Espio, Charmy, and Vector are all part of a team. They work together, and they always have. In this game, everyone has their own reasons for coming here. So. It sort of makes sense that they didn't bring back Mighty after this game because they never intended him to be an actual friend of the Chaotix group. Because he isn't part of Team Chaotix. None of them were part of a team. They were all just there. And Heavy is being annoying as usual. The reason that I have Heavy as my partner here is because I forgot to change my partner. Because you can walk right past the Comicaster. You don't you aren't literally forced to use it every single time you're going up to the stage randomizer. You can skip it if you want and keep the partner you already had. Which is good design, I like that. My partner got grabbed by the annoying palm tree things, but thankfully somehow he managed to to not get hit. But I did, and what the hell? Do I have a negative amount of rings? You will never see that happen in a Sonic game. I'm not really sure if this affects anything. Like, what does negative rings do? I mean, I didn't get hit when I had negative rings, so I don't know if you get... This game is pretty easy because when you get hit, you lose rings. And if you get hit without rings, you just lose your partner. And your partner respawns after a while. So it's not like you lose your partner forever or have to pick up a partner summoning item box to get another one. No, your partner just disappears and then you get him back after a while. And then you get hit without your partner and you die. It takes a lot of effort to die in this game. There's no, there's no crushers in this game at all. And the enemies don't really pose that much of a threat. They aren't dickishly placed, so I don't absolutely hate them. And as a result, I find them pretty forgettable. I mean, the only thing memorable about the Badniks in this game, something I didn't really notice while I was playing, in fact, is that the Badniks don't drop animals when you kill them. In fact, they drop rings. A lot of Sonic ROM hacks will take this idea and run with it. And I prefer the idea of Eggman using rings to power his robots instead of animals because it makes a lot more sense. 
Because it would take a lot more energy to keep the animal alive than you would get out of it. And rings are magical, powerful chaos energy. So it makes sense that Eggman would take advantage of them. Although, you can't so much as touch them without them getting absorbed into your aura and them giving you invincibility. So I'm not really sure how Eggman is able to get his robots to grab the rings and use them as energy sources. Because you think that the robots would just touch the rings and then they would get to absorbed into their aura and they would become invincible rather than being able to hold them. Something I really like about this game is that it has a sort of day and night system. I mean, the Genesis and the 32X add-on that this game was made for, it doesn't really have a, an actual system clock. Like, the game does not know what time it is. What happens is that you complete a level, like you complete an act, and then time passes in the game. And I absolutely love the way the game looks when it's at sunset or dusk. Like, I love the way it looks in Dusk and Dawn. I just love the, the beautiful sky, and it's not just the sky. The level design itself changes color, too. And I just love how they bothered to make a different color palette for, for every time of day, for every single level. Like, I love nice touches like that. It's such a... it's so neat. really helpful that he can walk on walls. Unfortunately, because of the whole stage randomizer thing, you can't really use strategy to success to choose the best character for every situation because you don't know what stage you're going to get. So, the only way that you can know for a fact what stages you're going to get next is, is if you have only one stage left. That's why I wait. I don't use the most broken character in the game until nearly the end of the game when I have only one or two levels left. Like, I would play as SPO and Techno Tower in every single time I play through it. But because I don't know that I'm going to get it, this is the only time I show it off. And the reason that I played as SPO here was because I forgot to show off that when you spin dash with him, he stands up and he does a pretty cool, like, ballerina twirl. Like, normally ballerina twirls look really lame when a guy does it. Yeah, I cut past this. Or, yeah, I cut past this. <laughs> but anyways, he, he actually looks pretty cool when he's just spinning around with his arms out. And they brought that back in Sonic the Fighters. I'll be showing that off a little bit later. I just love the way this level looks when it's at dusk. I love the way all the levels look at dusk. But the, the problem I have with the aesthetic is, of the game is that it's too brightly colored. Like, it looks... it's psychedelic, and normally I like psychedelic colors, but... This game looks like it's out of a children's coloring book. You thought that the levels in Sonic CD were trippy looking. Sonic CD had the excuse of taking place on Little Planet, so it was literally out of this world. But this is Carnival Island. This takes place on the same planet that Sonic grew up on. It really doesn't make sense for it to look so trippy looking. And so I don't really know why they went with that aesthetic that they did. Sonic 3 and Knuckles aesthetic is very realistic there's realistic environments in it, even though it does have the color contrast that Genesis games should have because it makes it easier to tell the difference between the foreground and the background. I don't think I show off all of the back sprites of all of the characters in the special stages. It's not really that necessary. And again, I don't really like these special stages all that much. He even spins around when he jumps. I pretty much said everything I need to say about the special stages for now. Like, 
you're always moving forwards and so you can miss a spe you can miss a blue spear it's nice that when you get to a checkpoint and you don't have enough blue spears you're allowed to go through the previous section all over again rather than you being completely kicked out of the the level that was that looked pretty intimidating but you just have to walk forwards and move to the left a little and you'll be fine the entire reason that this game gave Knuckles the spotlight instead of Sonic is that Sega of Japan rightfully feared that the 32X would be a financial flop. So they didn't want to give Sonic the protagonist role out of fear they would hurt the series' brand image if the game flopped. Makes me wonder why they made the 32X in the first place if they knew it was going to flop. But the point is, Knuckles KX was not originally meant to, to star Knuckles. It was originally going to be just another regular Sonic game. This game was, oh my god, again. Also, if you walk into the X's, then they get, they get destroyed and you get knocked back. And then you can just go, it's sort of like you can use them as bumpers. And they're also pretty useful warning signs. So that you see them and you know exactly, it's like a stop sign when you're driving. Like you see a, you see an X sign and you instantly know, instantly, that there's a pit coming up. Although sometimes it can be hard with death perception, it can be kind of hard to tell whether the X sign is in front of the pit or after it. But finally we have the next chaos ring. This is yet another Sonic game that has Chaos Emeralds equivalents instead of actual Chaos Emeralds.